All right, let's take a look at uh, distributions and probability models. Again, I'm still in my stat mode, so if I went into menu, mode number two, I'm in stat mode. I've got distributions as an option, so I'll press F5. If I'm working with a normal distribution, I just press F1 for normal. Uh, normal PDF, if I want to make the curve, I'm going to probably do normal CDF most often. So I go normal CDF. I got a choice of list or variables, so I'll go with variables. What's my lower limit? Let's just go with a standard normal curve. Let's say you have a lower z score of uh, negative 1.2, going to an upper limit of, um, let's go with 2.1, mean our standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 0. So we're looking at a standard normal curve. We're looking at the area between. Save the residuals, no. Uh, graph color will go with blue. You can either calculate it or we can draw it. So let's go ahead and draw it. I like drawing it and watching what happens. Gives me my nice visual. Gives me my lower and my upper. And what the probability is in between. Let me just exit there and do calculate this time. Gives you the same information. I like the advantage of the draw because the draw gives you, <clears throat> obviously, a nice graph of it. All right, let's just exit there. Let's say we wanted to go area greater than negative 1.2, so I'm going to go with large number. That'll take care of anything. So we're looking at all the area that goes to the right. There's my calculated value. I just hit execute a couple times. Or instead, I like, like I said, I like to draw it. So let's draw it. Area to the right. Exit. Let's do area to the left. What's nice is I don't need to remember any of the syntax. If you do this in the home screen, which you can do this in the home screen, you need to remember the syntax, which would be lower, comma, upper, comma, standard deviation comma mean so that's the one thing you do have to look out for so let's go uh, with 0.5 all right toggle down and go ahead and draw this is area to the left exit <clears throat> exit uh, let's take a look at a different distribution Let's look at a T distribution. We'll go with the TCDF. Again, based on a variable, it's going to be area to the left. Degrees of freedom, let's go with 5 degrees of freedom. Execute, lock that in, go down, down. If you want to change the color, you could. And let's draw. Again, same idea. Uh, let's take a look at inverse distributions. So let's do an inverse T F3. Inverse T, area that I'm looking for. Let's go with a 0.36 with 5 degrees of freedom. Execute. There you have it. All right. Let's take a look at a couple of other distributions here. How about the chi-squared? We just finished that. Chi-squared CDF. Again, same kind of idea. Let's take a look at what that chi-squared looks like between those areas. That's area to the left. That's a probability. That's something you don't normally see. Chi-square we think of as, as going to the right, but this does give you the option. So let's just go with um, 2.3 and upper big number, degrees of freedom 5, toggle all the way down, oops, go up and draw. There you have it. Exit there. You also notice that there is an inverse chi. Inverse chi working the exact same way. 
area degrees of freedom execute so it works backwards let me show you the other distributions F distribution binomial distributions all of these also have inverse calculations so inverse hypergeometric geometric inverse geometric Poisson which we don't do a lot of in AP stats geometric let's go with geometric PDF for a change successes five probability of a success point two and just execute there you go again it's very simple you just fill out the table and there it gives you all the information so those are your distributions for probability and when next one will be uh, we're gonna look at confidence intervals and hypothesis testing.